John Hancock is a drunkard, he lives his life like a bum. A boy wakes him up and points to TV, where a police chase is being broadcast. Despite his appearance, he has superhuman powers. Due to his constant drunkenness and cynical attitude, he inadvertently causes millions of dollars in property damage. First the sidewalk, then the road sign, some police cars, and when he gets in the car they blow his liquor bottle, which infuriates him and he destroys the street by stopping the car, then carries it around, grazing buildings and impaling it on the tower. As a result, he is routinely ridiculed by the public and considered a nuisance by the LAPD. After dozens of clubs a woman finally found Hancock. She flirts with him, wanting him to show her his man cave. He answers her nonchalantly and they drive to his trailer. They get in the mood and do some couple yoga exercises. At the moment of climax, he throws the girl away. This is why he doesn't have kids. She is a little shocked. She goes into his bathroom and he tries to calm her down, but she's already dipped, and drives away. Ray Embry is a public relations spokesperson, promoting companies that want to be seen as charitable with the All Heart logo. He unsuccessfully leaves a meeting and becomes trapped on a railroad track, where he is facing collision with an oncoming freight train. Hancock saves Ray's life, the train rams him, and he walks away without a scratch. The only problem is that all the train cars derail in the process, causing millions in damage once again. He's criticized for why he did not just take his car and fly straight up, but Ray intervenes and thanks him for saving his life. Hancock takes him home, Ray introduces him to his family. Ray's wife Mary looks awfully familiar to Hancock. Ray then invites him inside and they eat spaghetti with meatballs, Mary stares grudgingly at Hancock the whole time. Later, Ray offers to improve Hancock's public image, but he is reluctant, still Ray manages to slip in his card. In the pair's bedroom, Mary speaks ill of Hancock. Ray defends him and is confused as to why she hates him so much when all Hancock wants is to be noticed and Ray wants to help him achieve that. As Hancock listens on the roof, he feels like Ray might understand him. The next day, after thinking about it, he decides to give Ray a chance. He flies to his house and as usual he destroys the road. One of the kids calls him a buttcrack, so he decides to confront him. What's your name? In his annoying French accent, he keeps telling Hancock he is a buttcrack. Call me buttcrack one more time. Buttcrack and the kid goes flying. The other boys give Hancock some respect. Ray comes out and is glad Hancock decided to come and trust in him. He catches the kid and releases him so he can go see his papa. That is the stuff they'll be working on with Ray, also the street, not cool. Ray then shows him some bad press, after putting out an apartment fire he skipped a line with kids to get ice cream. Or Walter the big whale stuck on the beach, long comes Hancock, and Walter goes flying. Ray's point is that Hancock is a butt crack. Ray understands he's lonely and wants people to accept him. As Ray tries to stop him from drinking, Mary comes back and turns on the news. There's a warrant out for Hancock's arrest, and he has not shown up to court. For some reason, Mary seems satisfied to hear this. After hearing the news, Ray comes up with a brilliant idea of Hancock turning himself in and showing LA how much the city actually needs him. Worst case scenario, he can just fly out of jail. Hancock gives a public speech. Some of the reporters berate him, but he just follows Ray's text and says he will attend alcoholic anger management therapy and promises he'll get better. Mary watches it on the news and feels guilty. At the correction facility, he walks with other inmates for an admission. He gives his fingerprints and the photo is taken. On the way to his cell, some thugs who have a grudge against him try to show their dominance. Most people are in here because of Hancock, but he does not want any trouble. When he threatens a guy to shove his head up somewhere the sun doesn't shine if he doesn't move, everyone laughs, but Hancock delivers, head up the butt, no one messes with him after that. Ray was not amused after hearing the story. He tells Hancock that the DA wants him to spend eight years in prison or four and a half for good behavior. Hancock is surprised, and disagrees, he is about to leave, but Ray stops him by calling him a coward. He tells him to stop pretending he doesn't care, to just stay and wait. He is sure the people will need him and Hancock agrees. Ray meets with him every day and tells him to control his flight, how he lands and takes off, his handshake, his manners, and to give compliments. Most of the time Hancock just played basketball and attended anger management meetings where he just let his chance to speak up go by. News report of an increase in crime after Hancock's incarceration. The next day, Mary and her son Henry visit him. She brings him meatballs and he is delighted. During their brief meeting, Mary tells him that Ray is a good man and asks him not to let him down. Henry leaves him his favorite toy. Ray brings him a costume for when they call. Hancock is hesitant, but Ray convinces him it's a uniform to represent himself. 
When he misses a shot while playing basketball and the ball flies out of the prison, he jumps after it and the guards notice the breach. Hancock could just be free if he wanted to be, but he goes back to prison, he is really trying to change. At a meeting to deal with his anger, he finally opens up. People praise him for it and he begins to feel somewhat accepted. Hancock is contacted by the chief of police to stop a brutal bank robbery. He gets into top shape by shaving and getting his costume ready. The robbery results in a shootout between the police and the robbers, with bombs strapped to the hostages. With a new costume from Ray, Hancock is released from prison and makes a triumphant return. He lands without destroying anything, and even the task force is shocked. The officer tells him the details, eight hostages, four bad guys, and a pinned down officer. Hancock musters a good job to the officer and goes in. Literally. He reaches the wounded officer and politely asks permission to touch her body, like a true gentleman. Using the car as a shield, he gets her out safely and decides to end things quickly. Hancock starts picking them out one by one. The last robber threatens to blow everyone up if Hancock does not open the safe and get him and all the money away from here. The robber calls him buttcrack and that triggers him, he unscrews the lamp, flattens it and sharpens it. Call me buttcrack one more time. He opens his mouth and the arm is gone. He hands it to the cop and people thank him for a job well done. Ray is proud, or rather ecstatic. Suddenly Hancock is the darling of the crowd. Everyone wants a photo and a handshake. He has dinner with Ray and Mary, to whom he tells about his apparent immortality, and his amnesia from 80 years ago, also how no one ever came to find him. Mary tries to hold back her tears, but cannot. She apologizes to Hancock, but he says she did nothing wrong. Back at home, Hancock puts the drunken Ray to bed. Before he leaves, Ray grabs his hand and tells him he's going to do great, which resonates with Hancock. He then goes downstairs and sees Mary doing the dishes, he strikes up a convo, Mary puts her hand on his and that's cue for some infidelity to happen, not only that, but Hancock learns that Mary also has superhuman powers. They part ways on a confusing note. In the morning, Ray is hungover and notices the damages caused to the house, Mary blames it on Hancock sneezing. She does everything in her power to play a powerless wife. Hancock arrives and when Ray gets a call, he tries to stab her. He hits her. He threatens to expose her unless she explains their origins. Later, Mary goes to see Hancock and looks like a different person. She tells him that they have been living with their powers for 3000 years and were called gods and angels in their time. She also explains that they are the last of their kind and are destined to be paired. The temperature rises noticeably as the popcorn begins to pop. Mary does not tell Hancock the whole truth and Hancock heads off to tell Ray about the conversation. The exchange leads to a fight between Hancock and Mary, which takes them to downtown Los Angeles, causing significant destruction to the area. She tells him that she's been happy without him for the last 3000 years, but Hancock does not remember her and calls her crazy. Call me crazy one more time, he does. The weather starts to change and she slams the truck on him. Ray, who is downtown in a business meeting, is once again promoting his all heart logo. Back to the pair, lighting strikes the ground and tornadoes are forming all around Hancock. Two of them collide and destroy everything around them. Ray sees them and recognizes his wife using abilities like Hancock's. While Hancock is holding Mary, he apologizes to her for whatever he did, he doesn't remember, but he says she is the most beautiful thing he has ever seen. Ray sees all this and is in disbelief. Hancock meets Ray and Mary back at their house. Mary explains that Hancock is technically her husband, but that they separated before Ray was born. She explains that they were built in twos, and that they are drawn to each other over time and great distances. Later, when Hancock is at the liquor store, the news reports that the bank robber, now a pirate, has broken out of prison with some buddies. As he buys his bottles, which cost $91.10, the shopkeeper covers the zero to signal for help. Hancock intervenes in the robbery and is shot and wounded. He is bleeding. He is immediately taken to the hospital. When Mary visits him, she explains that two immortals who get physically close, begin to lose their powers. Meanwhile, Ray is in an elevator with his son and the pirate. Mary also tells him that she and Hancock have been attacked many times as a couple throughout history, while describing where he got his wounds, most recently 80 years ago in an alley in Miami. During the attack, his skull was fractured, resulting in amnesia. To save his life, Mary abandoned him at the time so he could recover from his injuries. After her explanation, a hospital is raided by the bank robbing pirate and several other criminals Hancock had encountered during his imprisonment. Mary is shot as she tries to defend Hancock, who manages to stop the two men with his bed. After laying Mary down, he throws one of the raiders out of the window and is further wounded while taking care of others. 
Hancock is overpowered by one of the men, but he grabs him by the balls and throws him out as well. Mary is being treated. The hook tries to finish Hancock off by shooting him multiple times. Both Hancock and Mary are dying at this point. Ray comes to the rescue and now turns him into a double hook. He puts him out of commission. While Mary is dying, Hancock uses the last of his strength to flee from the hospital so she can heal through her powers. The further he goes, the more promising it looks, until he manages to bolt away with his supersonic speed and Mary wakes up. One month later, Mary tells Ray about all the personalities of different historical figures. Hancock calls Ray. He now lives in New York City and works there as a superhero. As a thank you to Ray, Hancock paints Ray's all-heart logo on the moon, promoting his cause worldwide. You're gonna change the world.